a short time ago I'd ran this Brahmin BM869S against several other $50 meters. It survived a 6,000 volt 100 microsecond full width half height microsecond rise time in all the modes. It was damaged when it was exposed to the 13,000 volt transient from the original generator. Uh, this meter is since repaired. You can see the results of that testing in the finals. I had previously tested an 87V on this transient generator to see if this was robust as a Fluke 101 and unfortunately that meter was damaged. So you had a lot of people commenting about how the 87V wasn't damaged until it was hit with the 13,000 volt transient which uh, it is true but it also had never been tested to anything below 13,000 volts. As I continued to increase the power of the output I had to redesign and reconstruct this generator and I thought if I ever re-ran these tests um, we would build a better generator that we could actually program the output waveform and this generator is the result of that effort and it allows me to reproduce these tests with basically a push of a button my plan now is to use the new generator to test an 87V and try to determine exactly where this meter will fail when I ran the test on the Brahmin, I started out at 1000 volts and then I increased the voltage by 500 volts and I worked my way on up to 6000 volts roughly which is the limit of the new generator we'll start at the 1000 volts and work our way up again and I will repeat every test on this uh, Fluke 87 if it survives all the way to 6000 volts I won't do anything more with it so I'll go ahead and get set up for the test and we can go ahead and get started here we have the Fluke 87V with the new transient generator. You can see the current waveform. This is a thousand volts per division. It's putting out roughly one kilovolt. Again, this will be uh, five transients, positive, negative, just like before. Each mode of the meter will be tested. Once we're done, we'll functional test the meter. Again, we won't be testing the current inputs. See the waveform is quite repeatable. Okay, that's it. Go ahead and functional test it. I just finished testing the 87V. It appears to be functional after the 1 kV hit. So we'll go ahead and increase this to 1.5 kV. Okay, that's it for the 1.5 k. We'll go ahead and functional test it. Unbelievable. 1.5 kV. <laughs> That's all it took to uh, damage the resistance input. So here's with a dead short. You can see it's reading uh, 261 ohms. Open 9.4 k ohms. Jeez, a frickin' Pete. Dial check I assume works, that's what happened before. No. See how it won't read uh, zero volts with the uh, dial check. I don't remember the last time when we damaged an 87V what had actually happened. But uh, yeah, that definitely doesn't work. Let's uh, try it in capacitance mode. This be 100 uh, nanofarad. Yep dead so the capacitance mode doesn't work okay looking at it in the uh, millivolt DC range here it's now reading about 200 microvolts lower than what it did originally so I suspect there's some damage in that uh, mode as well so millivolts ohms capacitance and diode check are all damaged on this meter uh, DC volts and AC volts appear to be fine. Again, 1.5 kV, that was it. Uh, I don't know which mode it was in when it uh, actually failed. I'll go ahead and uh, take this meter apart and let's see if we can figure out what happened to it. 
Okay, so this is the main circuit board out of the 87V. It's interesting, you can see how far that chip is off the pads. Huh. Yeah, I'm surprised, you know, I would have thought they'd get that straighter, but huh. we'll use the brime in here to try to troubleshoot the 87V. Hopefully here it's just a, a, a diode. So, Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It uh, looks like we may have damaged the front end diode. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Damn. Spammer. Hmm. Okay. Just looking at these diodes here that I just pulled out. Uh, definitely two of these are failed. We'll go ahead and change these out and see if the meter is functional. Okay, just finished installing three new diodes. We'll go ahead and uh, reassemble this. Unfortunately with this uh, Fluke 87 see some of the shoddy parts that are in here you can see the switch this is just not the greatest setup at all anyway uh, you can't just uh, turn this thing on because the uh, display basically you can see how that covers up everything so I'll have to completely reassemble this thing before we can try this out So the meter is back together, uh, other than the case being installed. Go ahead and turn it on here. Alright, at least for ohms, it's no longer reading a few K ohms. I'll just go ahead and try some basic tests here. the uh, 0.5 ohm resistor here's a 1 ohm 50 ohm 100 ohm 1k 10k 100k 1 mag this be a 1 nanofarad this be a 100 nanofarad looks fine let's try dial check yep looks good go ahead and check the uh, millivolt range so we really here we're supplying one millivolt. Looks good. So that's back to normal. Um, here we're at a volt. Looks good. 10 volts. Looks good. I'll just set the generator up for Ten volts AC. Should be seven point one four. Yep, looks good. I am surprised that it uh, failed that low, but uh, the one thing about the Bryman, when it failed at uh, thirteen thousand volts, the two diodes or the two transistors, excuse me, that it failed uh, didn't actually physically break the cases. And on the original 87V when that was tested, uh, the cases actually came apart on three of the diodes during that test. So based on that, I assume the Fluke 87V had a lower impedance path. But uh, yeah, I didn't again think it would ever fail at 1.5 kV, but that seems to be the case. Unreal. Just unreal. Yeah, so there you have it. 
I, I don't have anything else to add to this. <laughs>